yeah so this is the interview it was a pretty little thing itself so again this money maker recently got appointed as a creative director of pretty little thing um which you know if you're a dude and you have a girlfriend you know what it is if you're a dude that doesn't have a girlfriend you probably should know what it is so that you can get a girlfriend <laughs> but in general it's a big deal right and to get it at 22 considering how much business that brand does how well it's known it's a really big deal i think in general it's probably a sign of where things have always gone you look at people like virgil r.i.p matthew williams of Givenchy, her and preston obviously doing his thing and helping out with calvin klein this whole idea of going to like traditional fashion school has completely dead i think and has always been dead in my opinion i think the goats exist because they are the goats but i think the new generation coming up is probably more worth to be somebody it's probably worth more to be more attuned to what people actually want that you're trying to design to as opposed to going into fashion school and learning the practical theory sort of like application of how to do fashion maybe you can marry both of them up but i think your time will probably be best spent working retail somewhere in a department store and understanding what customers want and sort of doing your thing on the side and learning by actually doing then maybe spending how much money it costs to go to university and study and then you know try and get a fashion job that way i think doing it the other way is probably better because obviously you're seeing now all these kind of um shopify fashion brands starting up and these girls kind of going from zero to hero really quickly in terms of the influencer stuff and now the influencer stuff is even waning right she's basically completed all the levels of influence so now she's kind of gone to the the other side of thing which is kind of becoming a creative director of a you know what would you call it we'll have like a fast fashion store right that kind of you know they're probably doing the same amounts of bits of volume and she's basically overseeing the entire brand i think it's eu and uk and eu i think she mentioned in the clip <clears throat> anyway with that said, I think this one is what well, she said. Friends, what's this one about? Is this money and clip of friends? What's this one about? I forgot what the clip is. That what did I ask her about? Oh, this is one. That's I remember. This clip they ask her about twenty four. Uh, about oh, how do you do it, right? And I think she says something like, "Oh, it's a controversial statement, but I think everyone's got twenty four hours and it's the same twenty four hours in the day. I just really hustle as much as I can in those days, and as hours, blah 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 blah." And a lot of people obviously had a lot of negative reactions to it because I guess the twenty four hours in a day thing is another sort of like um uh it's another thing people don't respond well to because it fills in that kind of hustle work hard you can make it too you just need to work harder kind of thing that's why you're poor kind of idea i think that's why people responded wrong to it but i kind of have to defend her a little bit because i kind of get where she's coming from but i can also understand why people don't really agree with it but i'm going to play the clip and i'm going to come on talking about it on the other side something that you'd ever imagined like you could actually ever do I was it anything on your vision board like I, I really sit and wonder about these things I like how do you kind of plan this Honestly, did it fall to, like into place I just, randomly I believe like my work ethic has has always been like you just can achieve whatever you want yeah. I, I had this saying where some people agree with it some people are, some people don't I always say we all have the same 24 hours in a day like it's down to you what you do with them and I feel yeah. like I always use mine to the best of my ability I always try and do what the most I can do and doing that has got me where I am now it's made me become a creative director and I just I, I, I honestly don't know like everyone's like give me advice how can I get to where you are and I'm like you just have to believe you can do it you have to believe that the world is your oyster you can achieve whatever mm. on earth you want to achieve like I'm proof of that like 22 and like this is where I am and it just if you want it you can get it you really can 22 I feel like there's another clap from me there <laughs> bloody hell another clap <laughs> it hit me that 22 was like boom like uh, honestly I mean and again, I don't necessarily see anything wrong with that personally. I don't understand the negative reaction. I get it if you're in a place where you genuinely have no route out and you're definitely down in the dumps and you've kind of, you know, you're in the mud for real. You know, people say, oh, I got it from the mud. No, you're actually of the mud and you see no prospect of you coming out. Maybe it does feel a bit disingenuous to hear somebody say, we've got the same 24 hours, but you're like, no, we don't. I mean, I have my 24 hours are spent trying to keep myself alive. I've got no time to think of dreams and entrepreneurial ideas and projects. Okay, cool. Cool. that person isn't speaking to you they're speaking to the person who maybe does want to get started in this field maybe does have aspirations and dreams of being an influencer or maybe copying or maybe following the footsteps of what molly may has done and achieving it and she's basically saying <clears throat> the opposite of what you hear most fashion people say or people in the creative field that they talk about oh my mum was a seamstress and she used to make my dress for sunday school and then i used to see her sewing and i would always kind of pick up material and make my own little sew thing like it's that kind of stupid story everyone says she's like nah i've only got here through pure pure hard work just being constantly just being constantly what's that word called 
um, consistently unafraid to kind of put myself out there, which is again a talent in itself. I've always maintained posting regularly on social media isn't for everybody. Look at some of your people that you know or just yourself in terms of your social media use. You don't want to be on there too much because it makes you look thirsty. You don't want to keep posting pictures of yourself because it makes you look like you've got a mental illness. So a lot of people have a lot of kind of um, a lot of kind of mental games they have to play just to kind of upload their own self onto social media. So let alone somebody that's uploading content, um, you know, giveaways, talking about their day tutorials and shit it's a lot it takes a lot of kind of um it takes a lot of kind of uh, egoless it takes a lot of ego and also being egoless to put yourself out there in a constant basis trust me i know i've kind of had to get to this point when it comes to recording a podcast especially doing the video portion of it so i don't necessarily see that as a bad thing and i guess in general i've always found it difficult or interesting how people react so negatively to somebody's own personal experience just because it doesn't vibe with how they view the world. For instance, she said clearly that, again, I don't know much about her story or history, but from what she said, from how she kind of see it, her own eyes, she perceived the only reason why she's successful as she is, is because she's worked really hard at doing the thing that she's done. Not because she's gifted or incredibly talented or whatever she's doing. She feels like she's got to where she's got to, mostly down to hard work. And if people ask her her honest opinion, how do I get there? The only thing she's going to relate to is her own experience. Say, yeah, hey, this is how I got there. And of course, if you've got talent, that's going to help you even better because it might speed up the process. But how I got there was just being consistent, posting, what's that Gary Vee thing he says? Post six bits of content a day on social media. It sounds insane, but think about it. If you're actually going to be an influencer, you probably do need to post that much content a day because think about you as a consumer, how many times a day do you check social media? So if you keep seeing the same post for me every single day, are you going to keep checking for me? Probably not. But if I share six bits of content to you or on the platform that you can then enjoy or, you know, react to or just like or whatever it may be, that's obviously a good thing. So maybe that is the way to go about things. But again, not everyone can do that. So I just feel like sometimes you got, people, you got to give these people a break. It's a new field. It's a new area. Um, it doesn't really make any sense why some people are able to make hundreds of thousands of millions of pounds posing in clothes they didn't design, you know, um, hashtagging things, sharing things, whatever. It's, I know it's annoying. It can boil your piss. But we're living in a new world. This is a whole new reality that people have been able to kind of gamify. They've been able to take advantage of, explore and essentially use this as an opportunity to take their family from the depths of poverty up to the flipping level, high high levels of wealth and I think that's a good thing because if anything this sort of profession influences or whatever maybe especially on social media being a public figure it should be encouraged more because this is legitimately one of the only ways if you're somebody that comes from a really working class poor background where you can legitimately go from having nothing to having something right because all you have to do is basically post things online and whatever budget that you have you can get stuff on you can make it like i've seen people girls do hauls on sheen do hauls on alibaba on tower but you can you can figure out a way a lane that works for you if you're somebody that's not able-bodied you can work for you somebody that's maybe a bit fat somebody that has a different skin tone whatever it may be an accent there is a lane for you that somebody else out there would want to enjoy your content so if anything this should be a thing where i think most people are doing it this should be a thing where if you're somebody from a disadvantaged sort of like quote unquote minority community you should be running full steam ahead at these sort of career options and taking notes when people like this speak and trying to replicate their success in whatever way you can because that is honestly an option it's honestly one of the best options out from whatever depths of poverty or whatever depths of loneliness you may be in terms of your career aspirations your way to support your family whatever it may be that's one of the greatest ways to do it you can legitimately go from having 500 followers to maybe a thousand to two to ten and suddenly your life is completely changed so I don't necessarily see what's wrong with somebody telling you hey my experience is if you worked really hard at what you're doing maybe you can get to where I'm going to get to because that's what they experience I don't think that's anything bad again there are other things that probably contributed to it it probably helps if you're attractive maybe for her it maybe helps because she's caucasian you maybe can appeal to a bigger consumer base or where she grew up okay whatever cool but what we can control because again she well, she didn't choose all those things but what she did choose was the ability to have good work ethic and the ability to be diligent to be persistent and to just keep going and going and going and I think you could do it too most people can do it but whether or not you want to do it whether or not you can is something else if somebody triggers you by saying that they, what they're saying maybe you have to look a bit more internal and figure out why you're getting so emotional about it I don't really know but I don't really see anything wrong with it in that regard but maybe I'm wrong if I'm wrong leave me let, let me know in the comments in it or let me know by replying to by email or something I'll glad gladly gladly um 
listen to the other side when it comes to this whole hustle thing because I don't really understand it. I get it's annoying. I, I honestly it's like seeing all those Ty Lopez videos and Gary Vee motivate. Like again, for Gary Vee, I love the guy, but he comes across really badly on TikTok. Some of his little kind of um, takeaway snippet things that he says, it just comes across really dead brained. But in general, what they're all saying is the same thing. Like this is, you know, it's essentially one of the only fields, especially when it comes to social media, one of the only areas or industries that legitimately anybody can get into. The The bar for entry is super low. Basically, you could just have a smartphone, even not a smartphone. You could just do it from just uploading stuff from an internet cafe if you need. Just have access to the internet and you could essentially make yourself a star if you want to, right? It's just up to, it's just you realizing what your lane is or what your niche is and kind of doubling down it and just providing that that, that core audience of people um, content that they obviously want to consume. But hey, what do I know? 